what isn't said becomes a symptom. This is one of the many quotes used, and in my opinion, a quote that perfectly sums up The Black Guelph. A film that came out recently, it's the featured directorial debut of John Connors. It's written by John himself and Tiernan Williams. The film stars Graham Early, Paul Rowe, Lauren Larkin, Tony Doyle, Denise McCormick, and much more. I was recently fortunate enough to attend the premiere of The Black Wealth at the Lighthouse in Smithfield as part of the Dublin International Film Festival, which is a yearly festival here in Ireland. And once I saw The Black Wealth was going to be there, I just knew I, I had to I had to go see it. I was recently fortunate enough to interview John and Graham, the director and star of this film, just a few weeks ago over Zoom. So this review may come off as a little bit biased, but I can assure you it's anything. But uh, I'm, I'm very happy to say that The Black Wealth is a truly terrific film. I was fortunate enough to meet John at the launch. I was fortunate enough to meet John Connors, Graham Early, Steve Hartland and Paul Rowe. I, I, I didn't get the chance to talk with the rest of the cast and crew, you know, because it was a very hectic night. But everyone that I met was immensely kind. and. Before I even talk about the film, I just want to say this is the most fun I've ever had in the cinema. It was absolutely mad. People were cheering, laughing, shouting, holding their breath. There was this amazing atmosphere that I had actually never felt in a cinema before. You know, you hear people talk about cinemas and how, how it can make people feel. I've never really had that until now. It was just an amazing atmosphere. Uh, in front of me, there were people who are 70 years of age. And behind me, there are people who are who are 20 years of age. It was just it was mad. But The Black Wealth is a film. It follows Canto, a drug dealer who lives on Sheriff Street in inner city Dublin, played by Graham Early. When Canto's absent father, Dan, played fantastically by Paul Rowe, returns into Canto's life, Canto wants nothing to do with him. This is when Dan meets Virgil and Beatrice, a mother and son played by the brilliant Tony Doyle and the equally as brilliant Denise McCormick. This leads to Dan developing a relationship with the pair throughout the film. Dan tries to make reparations with his son and he tries to come to terms with the abuse he's faced in his life. At the same time, Canto is in debt to a local crime boss played by John Connors and Canto attempts to reconcile his relationship with his girlfriend played by Lauren Larkin. The Black Wealth is a film which explores intergenerational abuse, intergenerational clerical abuse and the abuses of the church here in Ireland. So a heavy subject matter, you know, to be to be sure. Uh, but make no mistake, at the heart of this film it is a tale of a father and son. A father and son who never really knew each other, and yet they're connected in more ways than they realise. Which is something that is explored throughout the film and something which I found to be a beautiful, a beautiful narrative. Not only a beautiful narrative, but something that was true and honest and something which many people could connect with that, that, you know, relationship of a father and a son, a father and a son who are both two broken people who, who almost both want to be fixed in different ways, if that makes any sense. Or, Hey, maybe I'm waffling. Maybe nothing that I'm saying is making any sense. Um, but John has talked about how one of the inspirations for this film is famous Italian poem, The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. I hope, I hope I nailed that pronunciation. The Divine Comedy is a narrative poem that explores the spiritual journey a man goes on during his life. The poem is split up into three cantos which I assume is where Canto's name comes from, the main character. Uh, but there's actually there's actually a few more connections, you know, and I'm not a genius for finding any of this out. Uh, the poem also includes a character named Dante, who in the Black Wealth, I assume, is Dan. Uh, you know, in the Divine Comedy, Dante is accompanied by three guides, Virgil, Beatrice and Bernard. This is emulated in the film, with Dan almost being saved by the aforementioned characters I just mentioned, Virgil and Beatrice. Um, the film depicts... An aspect of Ireland that I think we feel it's almost easier to forget. Clerical abuses in the church is something we almost don't want to acknowledge. Why? Because it's hard. But we have to accept it. It's it's a tough one. It's something so much smarter than me should talk about. Um, but there's there's this fantastic scene in the film where, I don't want to spoil it, but a lawyer played by Barry Kinsella, who I think is a terrific actor, almost interrogates Dan on the stand. It's a heartbreaking moment. We, we see these abuses and something I have to commend John on is that he didn't shy away when it could have been easier to shy away because the truth is, it probably is. He did what needed to be done and he depicted it in such a way where it's honest. And like I said, that's the most important thing in cinema for me is honesty. And this was something that it needed to be shown the way John showed it. And he handled it with such a, a respect and the whole cast and crew did. So 
that aspect i mean people i feel like may get a bit hung up like i mean john put a post up on instagram saying uh what was it irish audiences are already being uh unsettled by the black wolf and i feel like yeah there is that effect but it's something we almost have to watch some films you have to watch come and see is a film you have to watch you just do because it's an important subject matter that needs to be you know you need to be aware of it whether or not you like it such is life and he explored it in such a way where the film's not bogged down in it. The film has these character moments and these other narrative details, which, you know, you can go in, anyone can watch this. I can watch this. One of my mates could watch this. A 70 year old could watch this. And it's an important film that was handled, like I said, with such respect. The film paints just this unyielding picture of that. How pain can be inherited from a father to a son. You know, it's it's like the famous Nietzsche quote. And I'm not a genius for getting on here and quoting Nietzsche. Any any old bastard can do it. Uh, but what is silent in the father speaks in the son. And this is a quote which I feel perfectly sums up this film in a lot of ways. What is silent in the father does speak in the son. What we don't say can be passed down and what we don't acknowledge can be inherited. Um. Canto doesn't realize why he is the way he is. We see throughout the film he is stuck in this cycle that he just can't break. He hates his dad for leaving and yet he doesn't realize that his dad is almost the reason as to why he, Canto is the way he is. Passed down pain, there's something to be said for that. Inherited pain, which like I said is a big theme of the film. Canto is a victim just like his father. The whole film we see drug trades, we see death, the deaths, we see the violence. This is this is all a domino effect that comes from the clerical abuses in the church. Almost every character in this film, in one way or another, in a way they don't realize, is being punished for this. And that's just amazing to me. And this is something I didn't even realize to writing this review, to writing the script for this review. I, I didn't realize that I acknowledged that. That I acknowledge that every character in this film is being punished. By the, for the clerical abuses and they're still paying the price for that I didn't realize that that's not something I came to terms with till I wrote the review and I mean don't make no mistakes the film isn't bo- like, like I'm talking about heavy subject matter here the film isn't bogged down in that there are scenes where there's this amazing scene where Canto's I, I don't I don't want to spoil the film but Canto's basically running through the streets of Dublin uh, you know from the guards and there's just this fantastic scene where we see the unison and there's like the, people are kind of getting in the face of the guard are saying, no, I'm just trying to start trying to make sure Canto gets free. And that there's such a unity there in inner city Dublin. And it's true. I mean, Dublin's Dublin's a far from perfect place. We can have films that celebrate Dublin. And I love those films. Those films need to exist. There needs to be films that not only celebrate Dublin, but celebrate I- Ireland and the Irish people. But on the other hand, there has to be films which talks about our flaws and acknowledges things we did that weren't right and things in the world in Ireland, in Dublin that aren't right. And The Black Wolf is a film which does that unyieldingly, which I loved. It's a film that exists because it needs to exist. And it's strange that I've never seen a film like this before. And I truly mean that it's a film everyone should watch. You know, this is all, like I said, a domino effect from clerical abuses. You know, you you maybe go and I think people are going to go and they're going to go see it because, oh, gangsters in Dublin and that's something which is proven. We love, we and I love those stories. But there's more to that. And not to say that gangster films are low art because gangster films are the highest art there is, in my opinion. They're true. And, you know, what I love about gangster films is that they always end the way they have to end. You know, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, I'm going to get to that point in a minute. Uh, but something I want to talk about. Ever since I saw Broken Law, directed by Paddy Slattery, friend of the channel, I adore him, an amazing filmmaker. I knew that Graham Early is one of the greatest actors in Ireland. One of the greatest actors Ireland has to offer. And I truly feel that way. And this film only reinforced this for me. And I'm not just saying that because he's my mate. I really, really think he gave an amazing performance in this film. He carried an inarticulatable pain with him throughout this film. And it's mad, you know, because... There's this, there's these scenes where Canto really is honest and he really gives so much of himself. And Graham had the bravery to do that. I mean, we were in a packed cinema and we we were all looking at the same visual image of Canto, a character. You know, there's a few specific scenes where he breaks down. He was just, Graham was just amazing in this. Uh, but, you know, I could spend all day talking about the cast and crew and what everyone did so fantastically. But I'd be here all day. From the cinematography to the lighting, you know, to to especially the color grading, the music was phenomenal. The music really helped reinforce what the film. Then there's this one scene in particular where the music is used in such a hauntingly way, which I I really, really enjoyed that. And um, you know, this the result is 
is, is the result was not only a terrific piece of Irish cinema, but a terrific piece of cinema. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and sound like, look, I'm quoting Nietzsche and I'm talking about how true and honest this film is. But I really feel that way, you know. I'm, I'm not, you know, some posh lad. I, I really did this film connected with me in a way that not, not many other films do, especially as an Irish film, because it celebrated that. It celebrated Irish aspects. And it acknowledged our faults and our, our our grievous flaws, which I truly believe we have. You know, we can sit here all we want and we can say Ireland's a perfect place, but it's not, is it? I think we can acknowledge that there's a housing crisis. Things could be different. Things need to be different. But this film didn't lean too heavily into either aspect, which I, I really enjoyed. Uh, funnily enough, after the film finished, there was a Q&A with John Tiernan, uh, Tiernan Williams, who was amazing as well. I, I You should listen to the Cluster Fox podcast, Evan, I, I highly recommend it, uh, with John Tiernan and Graham, where John brought up the whole cast and crew, because this was a packed out screen, and he brought up the whole cast and crew, and they went in a row one by one and just talked about what they did in the film and how they helped from hairstylists to production assistants to actors. I mean, this film was made during COVID, which you can all go check out. We talk about it in both interviews with Graham and John I have a recording of the moment it, it was really great to see uh, but after the film I was going to go up and congratulate John and ask him about the film but he got swarmed so I was like oh, I'll catch him in a minute and I mean under, understandably so it's the launch of the biggest film in his career I mean there's, there's no surprise and I mean after the film I was bursting for the jacks so I went to the toilet straight after the film there's a point to this story I swear I swear so I'm in the toilets and as I'm standing there Guess who walks in? It's John Connors. I couldn't believe it. You know, he was just out there talking with everyone. So I'm like, ah, John, what's going on? And he's like, ah, Daniel. Uh, so, so we're both at the urinal, right? And and we're talking about the film. And there was this question I had to ask him. After watching the film, I had one question. And I don't want to spoil it. So I'll try and phrase my question in a, in a non-spoilery way. But I asked him about this character in the film and something that happened to said character. And I, I, I said to him, I says, so this character, did what I think happened to him happen to him? And obviously I said it a bit differently, but I'll have to phrase it in such a way to refrain from spoilers. And John, you know, John kind of paused for a minute. And then he said, yeah, what well, it happened because it had to happen. And that was profound to me. It happened because it had to happen. There was no other way. And it, it reminds me in Sid Field's book on screenwriting, he talks about how the world of the story should set up the story and the ending. The world of the story should decide almost how the film ends in a, in a subconscious manner. The, the world these characters live in have to decide how it all comes to a boiling point and how it all you know ends. In Chinatown, the ending is decided by the world these characters live in. There's a point where you realize this almost has to end in a specific way. But I don't know if I want it to as a, as a human being, as you know, a sympathetic person. You don't know if you want it to end in such a way, but it can really only end in one way. It has to end in that way. And it's the exact same for the Black Guelph. The world and characters are set up in such a way that the film ends the only way it could have. And to me, that's just, that's beautiful. Uh, but let me reiterate, the cast and crew did an amazing job. Tony Doyle and Denise McCormick both gave absolutely fantastic performances. Lauren Larkin was amazing in this. I mean, even the people I got to meet, Steve Hartland, Paul Rowe, they were all lovely and they were all also great in the film. Dub Zeno and Casper Walsh were fantastic as well. Um, but there you go, that's my review of The Black Wealth. Uh, people might say I gave this a uh, good review just because I know the lads that. I don't give a rat because that couldn't be further from the truth. I genuinely love this film. Um, as always, if you have the means, please make sure to donate to the National Deaf Children Society. There'll be a link for that in the description. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This was my review of The Black Whale. Keep an eye on The Black Whale Instagram page uh, for news regarding an international release. See this film as soon as you can. It's something special. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.